You know what really corks my screws? Whenever I go overseas, I have to carry around this bulky looking adapter for all of my gadgets, and that is assuming, of course, that I can even get it into my overstuffed bag, lest I have to pay another outrageous amount of money to, heaven forbid, check a bag with the airline. And, and you know, speaking of airlines, how exactly is it that we as a society have figured out a way to safely get thousands of flights to their destinations every day, even between countries where the air traffic controllers don't speak the same native language, yet we haven't figured out a way to get everyone using the same type of power plug. And yes, I know about the voltage differences worldwide, with large parts of the Americas operating on 110 volts, while much of the rest of the globe uses between 220 and 240. But that's a rant for another day. And besides, there is absolutely no reason that these prongs that we use here in Canada couldn't carry a 200-something volt potential. And did you know, by the way, that this same style of North American plug first appeared all the way back in 1912? That means the world has had at least a hundred years to get on the same page about this. It's pathetic. But you know, hang on a minute. Because now that I think about it, this style of plug actually kind of sucks. I mean, aside from them being super easy to plug in the wrong way and frustrating users way before USB ever did, have you ever inserted a plug only part way and then gotten a really nasty shock when you accidentally touched the prong? Well, I have, and let me tell you, it's about as much fun as a soft kick to the privates. Well, I guess I wasn't the first person to notice that, as electrical power for homes surged in popularity long before there was any kind of serious international effort to coordinate how it was delivered. So countries mostly developed their own outlet standards separately, and some of them even intentionally deviated from the North American style in favor of safer designs with less exposed metal. I mean, the thing is, all you really need for a working outlet is a couple of sticks of something conductive and then maybe a third prong for safety reasons. So it doesn't really matter what shape they are or what kind of emotion the outlet on the other end ends up conveying. So everyone just kind of said, you know what? Who cares? Just make it work. And we ended up with this whole mess of different plug standards that we have today. I mean, sure. I get that when all of this happened, no one was taking lightweight laptops and electric razors across the Atlantic all the time, but like, please, won't someone think of the future generations of children? I mean, in fairness, right around the time the world's electricity usage was starting to ramp up and different nations might have come together harmoniously holding hands to figure out this plug issue, some jackass named Adolf Hitler was busy trying to conquer the globe. So. The international community was a bit more worried about stopping him than getting a record player that someone bought in New York to work over in London. Speaking of London, did you know that the Brits hastily developed a new plug standard that nobody else was using in their effort to put their country back together quickly after the Blitz? That's part of why gadgets from England need an adapter as soon as you get to the other side of the channel. But it's 2019 and there aren't any world wars going on, and even the Cold War is a distant memory. So why can't we go ahead and agree on one plug and one outlet standard? I mean, is it seriously just because it would be too much of a hassle to retrofit everything, and it's much easier to just use a, an adapter? Okay, yeah, I guess that's exactly the reason. Well, until we figure out totally wireless energy transfer, I guess I'll just charge everything before I get off the plane with those fancy international chargers they have on the back of the seat. Or maybe I'll just start going to the United States for all my vacations. I hear in Europe, some places, it is actually illegal to offer free soda refills. Did you know that? Because I didn't. Speaking of refills, if you've ever been in the need for a quick refill for your B-roll, After Effects templates, or motion backgrounds, Check out Storyblocks. We use Storyblocks all the time here on TechQuickie and it has really simplified our workflow. Stock video clips are easy to find and you can download as many as you want at a low cost to test them out in your project, whether it's a YouTube video or a video background for your website. So instead of letting your creative needs take a backseat due to budget constraints or scrambling because a client made a last minute change, use Storyblocks' affordable, high quality footage instead of like, Go on to try and find someone to go out and shoot it for you. We're going to have a link to Storyblocks right now in the video description. Go check it out.
So thanks for watching guys, like, dislike, check out our other videos, and uh, don't forget to leave a comment if you have a future fast as possible idea. I forgot what I was gonna say, but that's okay because we all forget things. Like how you guys forgot to subscribe that one time, but you'd never make that mistake again.